it's now time for What's Up Asheville, sponsored by the city of Asheville, with the host, Mr. Sam Parada, and here he is. Good afternoon, Asheville. Welcome to What's Up Asheville at WRES Radio, 100.7 FM, a radio show discussing projects and initiatives at the city of Asheville. I am your host, Sam Parada, communication and public engagement specialist with the city of Asheville. Now, for the past few episodes, we have talked about uh, a project called Art in the Heart. And today, we have the opportunity to learn more uh, firsthand from two ladies who have been working from the very beginning. Now, I'd like to introduce Stephanie Dow, Urban Design and Place Strategies Division Manager, and Carly Stevenson, Urban Designer for the city. Would you like to introduce yourself a little more and maybe explain what your department does for the city? Sure, Sam. Thanks very much. This is Steph Dahl. Yeah, I, I work in planning and urban design for the city. I'm, I'm one of these long timers. I've been here for about 17 years and I manage the long range planning and urban design and place strategies divisions. Just wanted to note that what we actually do as a department, the services that we um, provide. So generally we're looking at providing um, help to communities that support like a holistic, equitable and sustainable approach to growth and development. And I think, you know, that's very important to a lot of people across the city. It's kind of vague, but we bucket that into a lot of different areas like historic preservation and reviewing um, large development projects. We look at urban design for neighborhoods. Um, We're very interested, especially Carly and I, in public spaces and how they are not only planned, but managed and maintained. And um, I'll talk a little bit about, um, well, maybe I'll just let Carly introduce herself first, and then I'll talk about some of our key projects. That sound all right? Yeah, go ahead. All right. Great, yeah, so Carly Stevenson here. Um, I guess I'm a a short timer. I started in the beginning of January of this year. Um, I was working for the city of Raleigh in their urban design center. And my background is in landscape architecture. And I have a real interest in urban design. And um, my position is kind of a 50-50 split right now here in Asheville. Uh, 50% of the time I'm focused on public art. Um, in Asheville, and then 50% of my time is dedicated to urban design efforts and initiatives, and that covers all of those things that Steph was talking about, Uh, neighborhoods in the public realm, new development coming in, streetscapes, that sort of thing. So you're in charge of places like Pax Plaza, which we'll be talking about today. Is that correct? We're helping we're thinking about what Pack Square Plaza is going to look like in the future. So we're we're thinking of it from a zoomed out holistic perspective of what it's going to look like, you know, 20, 30 years from now. I love it. Uh, before we jump into speaking more about Pack Square, though, um, why don't you tell me some of those projects you were just about to to go over? Sure. So just some of the types of things that the planning and urban design department at the city focuses on. Um, One of them is implementing the community's vision as expressed in the Living Asheville Comprehensive Plan. So um, as much as, you know, it's funny because as urban planners or, you know, civic nerds, we all know that we have a comprehensive plan and we worked hard with a variety of community members to document what it is that they would like the city to be like in the next, um, you know, two to 30 years. A lot of people don't know about it. So that is something I would also just recommend that folks, if they're interested in understanding where we're trying to go as a community in the future, we've recorded that general vision. Um, So in addition to council's strategic goals, we have this long range plan. It's called Living Asheville. You can just do an internet web search and look at that. So that's our job is to implement it. We also have prioritized this year addressing what um, folks call um, the missing middle in housing. So this is acknowledging that we have a lot of development of um, high-end housing here, and we actually have a quite significant development of regulated affordable housing in our area. But what's not happening is kind of that smaller scale um, middle housing for um, rest of people in the community, and that can look like anything 
from you know a small multifamily apartment building to a duplex or even just smaller homes you know that are infilled in different communities and so we're looking at how to remove barriers to develop those types of housing choices we're also going to be starting work with the community to uh, develop a concept plan for Patton Avenue, which we're sitting on right now. Mm-hmm. So everything from, you know, this this I-26 project is, uh, it's coming at us. You know, if you drive up 26 every day, you know that that construction's happening and it's just going to keep moving north and eventually it'll get too close to our downtown. So everything from what um, some people call it the Smoky Park Bridge, some people call it the Big Bridge, but everything from what's really the Captain Bowen Bridge east all the way out here to Pritchard Park. We'll work with the community to talk about like what the land use, transportation, social, cultural patterns, all of that should look like for the next 30 years. And then the last big project we're working on is a good segue for our main topic today, which is um, the re-envisioning of Pack Square Plaza. And Pack Square Plaza is the main city square for the for Asheville's downtown. It doesn't include the entirety of Pack Square Park, which stretches all the way down to the Buncombe County Courthouse and City Hall and other areas. But it really is the heart of where we see, you know, when people want to do protests, when they want to have festivals, they come together to just do people watching. It's a, you know, it's it's um, it's a heart. That's why we're calling Carly's program the Art in the Heart. But it's a it's a response, and I want to say it's a continuing. Um, the Pax Square Visioning is a continuing effort. It was really spurred by um, the the community's response all over the world to the murder of George Floyd and other Black and Brown people, and taking a look at how our physical environment shapes and supports racism. We had a joint city county. Um, Vance Monument Task Force really take a hard look at just the Vance Monument they were asked by the city and county elected officials to say should it stay or should it go they did an amazing job they did tons of research interviewed a lot of people in the end they made a recommendation that the Vance Monument should be removed and so in March of last year City Council and the city is the owner of the actual monument um, directed that it be removed. Most people know at this point that it's been substantially removed, but because of a lot of different um, legal challenges, it hasn't been completely removed. Regardless of that, it's really important that, um, as directed by City Council and the County Commission, we come together as a community and talk about what inclusive public spaces really look like. So. You know, who makes money off of a public space? Who feels welcome in a public space? How are different cultures expressed in that that public space? Those are just some of the questions that we're looking to talk to community members about. And so we spent the the past year really just um, putting out a request for proposals and getting someone on board to help us work through some of that. We have hired Mitch Silver uh, Sonia Shaw and Nick Lowe, who all work with a firm called McAdams, and they have a ton of experience um, working with um, communities on looking at these types of issues, and they're going to start with us next week. We're putting together um, a community engagement plan. We're going to be working with everybody from the folks on the Joint Vance Monument Task Force to people who were not involved whatsoever, members of the Eastern Band of Cherokee Indians who have, you know, they are, this is unceded Cherokee territory, and we really want to honor that to, to, you know, take a look and end up, well, we're, I should give, wrap this up. <laughs> what we're going to end up here with is a vision document, and that vision document is going to do several things. It's going to, it's going to narrate what this place could look like and how it's more inclusive for everybody, even people with disabilities and what have you. But it's also going to help us as a community understand what's what's actually doable and workable and how we can get there through partnerships. Because we can dream big, but if we don't have the money or the time or the resources to do all this stuff, then we are probably failed. So. That that is, and I'm sorry, it's not in a nutshell. That was a long explanation, no, but of an exciting it was, project. It was very exciting. thorough, and I love that. Um, I I also love that you are being driven by this sense of community and inclusion of everyone. Um, this has clearly been a long process. I just moved to Asheville last year, and I've seen Pax Square Plaza uh, Park just change 
constantly from the monument being taken down to the base to different street arts happening there and I, I realize now that what you do is going to be a long overhaul for years to come and it sounds to me like you're just creating just running with the baton to pass it down to the next person and just keep it going forever um, and that is admirable for all of you so yeah, I think that's true I, I think there's like some long-term goals that will probably be identified but I'm also hoping there'll be some short-term goals so you know in the next year or two we can see some changes that reflect you know what we're hearing throughout this visioning process um, Amen, there's different, Carly. Yeah, different phases and stages and partnerships. And I think it's like a short, some shorter term th things, but then oh, that are moving us towards these long term goals. And so you said you started at Park Square Plaza Visioning uh, what, last year, you said? Just the pre planning for Just it. the pre planning. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, what have you done so far? Is there anything that has been going on currently that you can talk about? Sure. Uh, the first thing is that we started working with some existing boards and commissions, people who are already involved in a real civic way uh, to get them engaged on the project. So the one of them is the Public Art and Cultural Commission of the city of Asheville. And then the other one is Friends of Buncombe County Special Collection with Buncombe County. And that's uh, they are supporters of the library. So with um, the Public Art and Cultural Commission, we've we brought in different panelists, um, talked about what you know a survey of what is uh, art, public art, and memorials are actually already in the park, and um, and Carly's going to talk a little bit more about our work with them because that's how she that's what she used as a springboard to start the Art and the Heart program, and then I'll say with the Buncombe County Special Collections. We were able to work with Catherine Cutshaw, who um, directs that part of the library, which is an amazing resource. And if you have not been down there, I recommend going down there. You're just going to want to go down there all the time. See the record shop. Yeah, see the Carolina record shop. It's very cool. We So we've been working with her and members of that group to um, create a historical database for that anyone can access. It tells like alternative or tr you know um, narratives ones that you may have not actually heard but that are true and are recorded about the history of um, the plaza area um, from as far back as we can find those histories so we've been working on that and um, we also have engaged um, several members of like I would say a, a younger people by far than me mm -hmm. to try <laughs> to try to um, create a foundation for um, youth engagement which is really Im important in this so the first thing we did is we um, engaged with some folks from UNC Chapel Hill they are uh, they just finished their first year of college they're called Moorhead Kane Scholars and in their program they are required after their first year to do a civic collaboration summer they came here, we embedded them in our in our pre-planning work, and we had them interview everybody from, say, members of housing authority communities to um, downtown developers, and get an idea of what people really felt like about our downtown and inclusivity. And they're developing a report. They're leaving this week. They've been here with us for, for a couple months now, but they basically did their own work to figure out like why I'm going to phrase this in a positive way. What would make more people, especially more people of color and young people, want to come into the heart of our downtown? So what are the barriers and what are some of the possible solutions? So they're, um, so they're working on that report and it will be made public for everybody to see. And then we also have engaged two City of Asheville Youth Leadership Academy students, their high school students. Um, in the Buncombe County area to work with us directly on youth engagement. And so they've been with us just for two weeks. But as we kick off our communication and engagement planning, they are also going to, they're helping us figure out the ways to um, really bring people in who are, these people are going to basically own or be the users of Pack Square more in the future than any of us will. So we, we recognize that that is it's important um, to concentrate on that. So, you know, back to the Public Art and Cultural Commission, we started working with them. Gosh, Carly is fairly new, but um, we started working with them 
uh, I want to say in the spring and Carly basically surveyed them and started asking them about um, how we could bring different arts ex and cultural experiences into the heart of um, Pack Square Plaza to engage people on some really thought-provoking questions. So I'm going to ask Carly to explain what happened. Sure. So I feel like one of the, the first meetings that we had, it was more of a back and forth, you know, let's talk about what what is it, what is a monument and what does that mean to a community? Um, it should be a reflection of the, the spaces and the people and the stories and the histories that it is embedded in or that it, you know, is surrounded by. And we looked at some really interesting case studies. We had some people come in and talk to us about that question and present their ideas. Um, Monument Lab was, you know, one of the case studies that we looked at. They're based out of Philadelphia, right? Yep. Yeah, and they do a really great job of allowing artists to come in and sort of reimagine what these monuments might look like or should look like. Um, and it really provoked a lot of critical conversations around what that means for Pack Square Plaza. And as we were talking, um, the Temporary Public Art Program came into being as being a great and unique way to engage the community and to learn more from our artists, which there are so many amazing artists in this region, um, and in Asheville in particular, is kind of known for that. So it's like, let, let's let our artists guard, guide these conversations around these difficult topics um, that everybody wants to talk about. So the, the real idea between of art and the heart is to engage with the community and allow our artists to sort of lead those conversations or spark those ideas. So now from there, Art in the Heart is aiming at bringing everyone together to Pack Square to just observe what Asheville has to offer from a more inclusive perspective is what I gather from everything you're saying. Yeah, we want artists to, you know, from all different backgrounds and cultures to come in and through their art tell their story. Um, and that might be, you know, histories that people haven't heard at all or hasn't been represented in Pack Square Plaza up to this point. So, or it could be something visual um, that speaks about the way that the space is organized or maybe where certain like corners aren't activated and they, they could be, you know, so it can be, it's a, a mixture of visual storytelling and engagement. Love it. we're trying to do. And so let's jump into Art in the Heart. Um, so far what I know is that there's going to be 10 artists and they're going to be displayed starting late yeah. August? Yeah, late summer. So late the summer. call for artists went out on May 25th. And the original deadline for applications was June 21st, but we ended up extending that to August 1st. So now we're looking for all applications to be in by August 1st at 5 p.m. And we will be selecting up to 10 artists, though we have different categories or longevities. So this can be all types of different art. Um, it can be your more like traditional art, sculpture, painting, that sort of thing. It could be performances you know, musicians can come in and play. It could be, you know, a poetry session where people come out and do, you know, spoken word type events. Um, it can be, you know, a light show projection. It could be something that people come in and, you know, participate in. It could be an interactive session where people are moving around blocks or building things together and, you know, learning through that experience. So the categories of longevities, um, reflect that. So we have categories for one to two days, we have a category for one to two weeks, and then we have a category for one to three months. And those kind of reflect those different art forms. So if you're wanting to do a performance or this sort of like interactive experience, it might be the one or two day category. And we're going to allow or select um, more of those types of projects or experiences if it's something that is more of a sculpture that's meant to be in place longer term, you know, up to three months, we're selecting up to two artists for, for those types of um, projects or proposals. And um, some of the other, 
you know, elements or criteria that are part of the program. The theme is social equity and inclusion. And we're also asking each artist through their proposal to answer two questions. One is how should Pack Square Plaza look and feel in the future? And then what stories or histories have not been represented in this space up to this point? So all proposals are answering those questions through their, through their Now, audit. you told me before we started the show that we already have a lot of people signed up to as applicants for this. So this is a quick message to everyone out there listening. If you know anyone who wants to participate or if you want to submit your arts and, app and apply, you can do it at ashevillenc.gov slash public arts and you know hurry up you have one month uh, yeah you have one month left over so please join us and let your voice speak about what Asheville is to you yeah we definitely want to hear from you and if you have you know definitely go to the ashevillenc.gov slash public art you can also reach out to me uh, Carly Stevenson at the city of Asheville it's uh, K Stevenson at ashevillenc.gov and I'm happy to speak with you and talk through any questions you might have. And I'll just say a couple quick more thing, a uh, couple quick things that we are offering artist stipends to applicants, and that is an amount from $500 to $1,500, depending on the proposal and the scope of the project and the budget that is submitted. And then we have four locations that are identified in the plaza, um, kind of pre pre identified as prime locations for public art but we're allowing artists to select anywhere in the plaza that they might be inspired by. We'll, we'll work with them and, and try to accommodate a different location if one is identified. And we're also looking at including an, a fifth location um, into the scope of locations. And this one is at the corner of Eagle Street and South Market Street and will be nestled in the block. So we're hoping that we'll be able to work out all of the contract agreement details with the property owners to make that happen. So not only do you get your art published for the city, but you also get paid and you tell a story of what has released to you. It sounds to me like something everyone should really be doing. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. <laughs> yeah, also, yeah. We also are hiring a documentarian that's going to professionally document each one of these pieces. So the artists will walk away with having that in part of their portfolio. portfolio. Piece, yeah. Mm -hmm. And this project is taking place over the law over the course of how many months? Yeah, so end of August is when potentially first installations or performances could begin to take place. And since we delayed uh, the applications or the application deadline, we're now looking to, for installations and pieces to be in place potentially till March 5th of 2023. Oh, wow. And hopefully we see it going beyond that. Yeah. Potentially. I, I think this is sort of a pilot uh, test of this temporary public art program, but I would love to see this become a regular component or programming that happens in Pack Square Plaza moving forward. That's fantastic. I love everything, all the work you're putting to this, all the engagement you're putting out there, all the different perspectives you're looking at. Um, is there anything else about this project or in general about Pack Square that you'd like to talk about? I think I'd like to follow up um, on Carly's note about how we're looking at a new location uh, essentially in the block and, and to say that that is the impetus for that is really our acknowledgement that there is, um, a, there is a, a social connection, there is a mental connection between uh, the heart of our downtown and our African American commercial district um, in, in the block. Um, that hasn't been worked on in quite the type of way that uh, that we could be working on it together as a community and that we're going to take advantage of both the Art and the Heart program and the Pack Square Visioning program to really update the, um, a vision for connecting that. So if you look at if you look at the block and and you know how it's a really thriving, reemerging place for multiculturalism. It's got our you know most important cultural institution, the YMI, um, sitting right there, going through a massive reno renovation. It's a, a good time for us to 
think about when people come into the heart of our downtown, are they provided an opportunity to come into the heart of our black downtown? And this is such an important topic. You know, we, Asheville has gone through so many changes since its inception. And it's, I think it's time to start showcasing what real Asheville looks like. You know, it's not just tourism, but the people who live here, the people who've built a history within the, t the city. And um, that sadly is bringing us to an end about what art in the heart is. Please apply. We want to see your art. We want to hear your voice. And again, you can apply at ashevillenc.gov slash public art. And in the topic of equity and inclusion and engagement, please don't forget to go to our website, ashevillenc.gov and click on the engagement tab to learn how to engage with us better. We just released Your Voice, Your Choice. And this is for the voices that have been left out of the conversation the longest um, to make an impact and talk about projects that us here in the city are working on. You can leave comments, you can leave reviews, you can give your, your opinion on what's going on and just tell us we're doing a good job or hold us, account hold us accountable if we're doing a bad job. Um, but yeah, thank you so much, Stephanie and Carly. Uh, it's been a pleasure having you here and telling us more about what you plan to do with PacSquare. Thank you, Sam, and thank you, Randy, and everyone here at WRES. Yeah, thanks. This has been great. Well, that's all the time we have for today for What's Up Asheville. Thank you so much for listening, and please don't forget to participate in the different projects that we have here at the city and stay informed about our latest news. Visit our website at ashevilleandc.gov to learn more about our different departments and what we can do for you. Now stay tuned, and we'll be back to talk about another city project in the near future right here at WRES 100.7 FM. Sponsored by the city of Asheville in collaboration with WRES 100.7 FM, this program will re-air every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 1230. Thank you for listening.